Okay, so I'm going to be talking today about trunk-based development, uh, which means that you develop all of your code in one branch. So you don't have feature branches and you don't have merge hell. So that's the first big benefit. Um, what I'm going to be arguing is that trunk-based development is continuous integration. A lot of people I used to work with at ThoughtWorks, and Martin Fowler's one of them, um, doesn't actually like the term trunk-based development, although Martin Fowler in particular doesn't like the term trunk-based development because he thinks we should just call it continuous integration because that's what Kent Beck originally meant when he defined the term continuous in integration. He meant everything done all on the same branch. But with semantic diffusion, nowadays when people say continuous integration, what they typically mean is that you're working in feature branches and you have a CI server running somewhere else that is continuously running tests and deploying from your commits, but they're not deploying to prod. That's the problem. So it's not continuous integration. Pure continuous integration is where every change you make to the code is integrated with the code of your colleagues, with the whole of the code base, and is therefore deployable. So I'm going to be talking about trunk-based development. I'm going to be talking about the benefits of trunk-based development. And those benefits are that they really, they need um, what G. Paul Hill calls MMMSS, which is many more, much smaller steps but they also facilitate that way of working. And the smaller your steps are, the more agile you are, and also the fewer risks are involved. So when I say that, what I mean is that if every change you make to the code is integrated and deployable, then that means that um, every move between ready and ready is small, so that if you introduce any problems, you don't have to go back very far to either just rewind or to identify how that problem was introduced and therefore fix that problem. And as part of that, you get fast feedback. So you know straight away if you've introduced a problem, but you also can find out straight away how your users are going to react to the latest change. You avoid merge hell, as I've spoken about. Um, you get fewer cues in your development process. So you don't have to be waiting for something to be finished. You don't have to be waiting for something to be tested and integrated and deployed because everything is deployable, ideally, every few minutes. It also uh, improves and increases a sense of collective ownership because you do have to collaborate very closely with your colleagues. Trunk-based development isn't something that you can just say, okay, we're gonna do it that way now if you're not used to doing it that way because there are lots of different skills that you need in order to be able to do it. I believe you end up with better quality code. Uh, and also um, Dora and Accelerate um, agree with me, <laughs> so that's good. But if we talk about what you need in order to be able to do trunk-based development, first of all, you don't use feature branches. Um, second of all, your code reviews are going to be interactive. So they're going to be happening continuously as you write the code. So ideally you want to be doing pair programming or mob programming. Um, there's not going to be pull requests because you're not going to have branches. Now that's a whole other topic which I will wax lyrical on in the talk. I don't have the time to go into now. Another thing that's really helpful if you want to do trunk-based development is to get help. So find a technical coach, find an expert who can help you with the skills that you're going to need because you're going to need to know how you can write code in tiny bursts. You're also going to need to know how to have tests continuously. So test-driven development is a big boon. But you need an automated test suite. You need to know that every commit is going to go through a pipeline and it's going to go through various checks and balances so that you're confident that you haven't introduced any new problems. Um, you need to be quite open and honest and collaborative with each other. But one of the, the reasons, because that's a thing that you need, that also means that when you use trunk-based development, it builds collaboration, communication and trust. Um, you're going to have to be patient. It takes time to get the skills that you need and to get to where you want to be. You're going to need automated testing. You're going to need a well-factored code base that is modular, loosely coupled, has minimized dependencies so that it's easy to work in one small area and deploy it. Um, one really important thing is that you all agree as a team that every commit when it goes through the pipeline, if that pipeline fails, it's everybody's priority to get it green again. You do not ignore red builds, you do not ignore failing tests, and you push 
frequently and you refactor frequently and you're ready to throw things away. So one of the benefits of moving in small steps is that if your latest small change has introduced a problem and you can't instantly see a fix, you can throw it away and start again because you, it was such a small amount of work, that's not a problem. So these are all the things I'm going to be saying about trunk-based development. I highly recommend it. The very last thing that I will say is you do not have to do trunk-based development. I'm not the boss of you. But the, all of the things that I've talked about that are benefits of and requirements for trunk-based development can all be done on their own. So you can use these very useful techniques and learn these useful techniques, even if your ultimate goal is not trunk-based development. And each one of them will improve your software development and delivery.